Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the American Vindicta Show. Today, we are going to talk about a endless amount of information that is leading to a potential apocalypse. Today, we have with us Mr. Jamie Walden of Omega Dynamics. Jamie is a good Marine Corps brother of mine. We have worked together in uh, certain capacities. We've trained together as well. And we are going to be um, talking about quite a bit of things that Jamie has has meshed together to prove, I guess you could say, Jamie, the coming collapse of the world because of a POFUS. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it, 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 this is one of those subjects that's a big deal to break into, but just as a, I guess, like we'll do it, we'll do a thesis kind of thing for what we're going to talk about today is that there's something occurring right now in our culture and even within the truther movement and then within the Christian truther movement where there is this disassociation from the totality of the information, right? In law enforcement, we talk about the proponents of the evidence, right? The totality of the circumstances when we're building up cases, you know, you and I both served in, in law enforcement at a federal capacity, you know, and then I was a street cop as well. And and so we understand the proponents of the evidence, right? And the and it's proper Jewish prudence to put it all out there. But the the normal person is having a hard time connecting the why. So we get this inundation of sound bites, right? It's the intel, the intel, the intel, the intel, the news headlines, the news headlines, the sound bites, the whatever, right? And through this, what's been coined as the Cloward and Piven strategy, which were two, uh, I believe they were Stanford professors, they kind of coined this word, this this strategy for actually getting somebody to disassociate from the bigger picture, right? And and what their strategy said is you constantly bombard them with so much information from all these varying, uh, all these multitude and diverse and varied uh, uh, avenues that they can't rightly connect the dots to the macro. And that's me just coming from Marine Corps infantry, you know, as well too, being sergeants in the Marine Corps infantry is that we're taught to deal with the battle space as a whole with the macro, because if you don't understand the macro battle space, you don't understand your role within that. Right. When you're supposed to hold a particular position or coordinate this, this aspect or clear this building or are doing SSE on this particular target or whatever. When you don't have the, the, the macro perspective and view, you kind of get lost in the weeds and you're you're actually no longer an asset to the greater mission, but you become a liability. OK, so let me let me lay that groundwork here. Because here's the reality. When we look at the totality of the circumstances of the information going on, everything from World War III to um, to the to the pandemic, the global pandemic, to the mass depopulization, to the sterilization, to the LBGT, you know, movement, to the rise of occultism, to the uh, the implementation of of the private sector space-based weapons development and space-based off-earth colonization and technological development merging with the governments of the world, with NASA, the European Space Agency, these other space agencies. When we look at the massive spending and the great reset that they keep talking about, right? We can go on and on down the list of the interconnectivity of all these singular events, primarily being uh, what happened with coronavirus, I believe that's not a trigger word for the algorithms, only the other word, right? Like you can still mention coronavirus, but um, with coronavirus and the imminency, imminency of World War III, foregone conclusion with a limited nuclear exchange, the, the question is why? Why is there this breakneck push right now, this convergent zenith of all these efforts for huge, massive depopulation, sterilization, and consolidation of all the governments, all the medias, all the narratives, all the supply chains, all the blah, right? You name it, fill in the blank. When you, when you take it objectively, they have already told you the why we just missed the connectivity and the connectivity is that there is absolutely unequivocally a significant celestial space body that was locked onto in the early 80s uh several of them actually but a main but a very particular one uh called apophis which we'll get into here throughout this throughout this dialogue that they've locked onto in the early 80s that they all know is coming and it is going to be earth changing. I did not say earth destroying. I always make that qualifier. 
biblical worldview, scripturally based, there is no earth destroying asteroid that's going to hit it. I don't care what the movies show. I don't care what their 18 trillion year dinosaur uh, theories say about the earth or anything like that being hit and destroyed and then being reformed, you know, from asteroids. That is not biblical in context whatsoever. However, what is unequivocally biblical related to the end times and the tribulation period is the fact that there is a marching out of celestial events that completely alter the fabric of humanity and of the face of the earth physically, spiritually, emotionally, governmentally, and it's all through what we would call astro catastrophism, right? So, you know, there's guys out there like Steve Quill, obviously, and, and Tom Horn. And other great researchers, I think of Gil Broussard, who talks about planet, planet X, you know, regularly, Nibiru, Gabriel's Fist, these different terms, where they have shown through the research and the data, not what they, it's not speculation, it's not subjective, it's what the science is saying, what all the science is saying, and what the governments of the world are actively currently preparing for. So, Having that bigger macro perspective on the why, why the Deagle report, why this weird push for World War III, it's so uncanny. It makes no sense. People, oh, oh, it's about because, you know, the economy of China is going to collapse. The economy of the U.S. is going to collapse. So they need this as a scapegoat. No, they don't need that as a scapegoat. It's because they know what's coming and they are all in agreement depopulate now as quick as possible because the number one threat to humanity is not the the uh earth sciences and the heliophysics and the effects of this space body on earth that's not the number one threat it's going to be a big deal it's going to be humanity shifting but the number one threat through all their uh algorithms and all their different things that they put together and all their different science you know uh, uh simulations is that the number one threat is the human chaos factor They have all said it over and over again. The human chaos factor is the number one threat that they anticipate experiencing when the space body becomes visible in the sky. Therefore, the conclusion is consolidate all governments. No kidding. These are their findings from a 2019 simulation. Consolidate global governments. Consolidate all media so that you can control the narrative and control the human osmotic pressure and the human chaos factor as much as possible by mass depopulation. I kid you not, those were their findings from a simulation conducted in May of 2019 in New York City with the heads of almost every major agency that you could ever think of. So, uh, Doug, that's just the lead in. And then we can do like a kind of a systematic breakdown on the how how we even come to these conclusions, the understanding of it, because I know for the listeners hearing this right off the bat, they'll instantly be dismissive. It's sensational. It's hyperbolic. It's emotionally predatory. It's subjective, right? But I'm telling you, it's not. It's just not. And if you don't have the right biblical worldview in the biblical context and an understanding of the scriptures relating to this very particular day and time, if you don't understand the antediluvian age, right, everything that was going in the antediluvian age, even what's recorded in Vedic texts and all these different things on the fact that God has always chosen to use radical celestial events to shift the hearts and the minds of humanity to judge the inhabitants of the earth, to judge the gods of the gods, little G, the Elohim gods of the realm seen and unseen to shatter Rahab, right? The asteroid belt to judge the gods of Egypt, to judge the gods over Sodom and Gomorrah, to judge with the deluge in the days of Noah through you know, some could speculate like a younger Dryas type of thing, which was a crustal shift in a great deluge because of space bodies to judge the armies in the days of Joshua through major celestial events where it literally stops the sun, stops the move, changes celestial bodies. And we see it all the way on through to the tribulation period where it's the judgment on the inhabitants of the earth with what? with the foreboding of looking after those things that are coming in the sky. Foreboding of looking after those things in the sky. The the stars falling from the sky is like figs ripen, right? A great mountain of fire cast down into the sea. Hail mixed with fire 
coming down, burning a third of the trees, a third of the grass, the water becoming poison, becoming wormwood, uh, great earthquakes, such as which the world has never seen and never will be again. Uh, a third of the moon darkened, a third of the sun darkened, a third of the stars darkened, the moon being turned blood red, the sun becoming black, black as sackcloth, plus the earth changes that create, you know, magnetosphere type earth changes and even uh, axial tilt and axial wobble that's mentioned in, in Isaiah that the earth gets smacked so hard. Scriptures say that it staggers like a drunkard on its axis, the roaring of the, of the sea and the waves, the changing of the jet stream, the changing of the higher conveyor belt and a greenhouse effect with the with the the vaporization right and the water conversion when this great mountain of fire is cast down to where men cry out because the scorching of the heat on their flesh in the tribulation period is all singularly related to this event that the global elite absolutely know that's coming and they absolutely know that the source of it is the lord god almighty and to the very end they will refuse to repent Doug? Well, it sounds like you're, you're talking about, you know, when people say this is a uh, hyperbolic, or if people say that we're sensationalizing, you haven't read the seven seals or the seven trumpets yet. Uh, because that is, that's going upon, um, an account that nobody I think will ever be able to be ready for. You know, you're, you're talking about things and here I, I have it open up to revelation um six right here when when you talk about like the sixth seal being opened up i looked and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth the full moon became like blood and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale and then go into the seven trumpets the first angel blew his trumpet and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. And the second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Um, there, there seems to be a little commonality here with things coming from the sky and coming down into the earth and hitting the earth, just like Sodom and Gomorrah correct? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's even, again, when you look at it through historicity and even archaeology and, and the different, you know, ancient texts is they speak over and over again about different uh, radical celestial events, what we would call like a cloud burst type of impact where these space bodies come in, they blow up over the earth, they coat whole deserts with what would be considered, you know, a type of like a a nuclear vitrification vitrification is just a really fancy word to like turning sand into glass right like making it smooth as glass we have that all over the face of the earth at all kinds of different places in time india ireland scotland france germany libya egypt syria ecuador the mojave desert and the u.s all have these same impacts over them right we have even bode's law speaking to you know, the 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 nature of the asteroid belt, which many presuppose that it was actually the planet Rahab, which is listed in Psalm 89. Psalm 89 talks about crushing Rahab like a carcass, crushing this planet Rahab. There should be a planet where that asteroid is given Void's law, but it has been obliterated because God destroyed it, right? We have even a uh, 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 different uh, astronomers and, you know, uh, uh, space scientists studying the things on Mars and the moon and stuff like that. And what's interesting, a lot of them come to this strange, this very strange, it seems misplaced uh, conclusions. And that is, is that it's as if there was cosmic warfare in the heavenlies and these these planets are these space bodies are these larger asteroids whatever what these stars whatever you whatever astronomical word you want to use to describe them it's as if they were being impacted with other rocks being hurled right at them right when we look at the different mythos and the mythology of uh, uh the different ancient empires every single one of them talk about these these large celestial events when they were at the peak of their wickedness when they're at the peak of their lawlessness things would happen in the sky 
and they would be judged of these celestial events. Job talks about the Lord literally storing up his storehouses uh, with hail, which he reserved for times of trouble and times of war that are hurled down at the earth. We have, again, in the tribulation period, it talks about 70 pound hailstones mixed with fire, which is a classic comet type of thing, right? These, these gas explosions coming off the, the rock mixed with water and different vaporous gases. And as it enters the atmosphere, they have these burning tails, right? And they're half melting, but they're half burning but they're giant hail rocks and they're filled with methane gas as igniting and they're literally slammed onto the earth, right? And so we do have this proper context for it. But what's even more important than the context of the ancient, the ancient text is what's going on right now with the global elite. They are running simulation after simulation, meeting after meeting. They're meeting up in Antarctica with Klaus Schwab and, and Christine Lagarde and the patriarch Krill, right? And Obama and Kerry and Putin and the Pope and Buzz Aldrin and Tom Hanks and all these other weirdos are all meeting in Antarctica to discuss these certain things. What is it? They have this steed vault, right? That they, and I can't ever pronounce the word right because it's a, it's a, it's a Nordic word, which are always extremely, uh, the Svalbard. Uh, seed vault that they locked and sealed the door on. You have Elon Musk and other private sector space based agencies that their primary focus, they tell you what their primary focus is, is to build arcs. They keep talking about building arcs. You have the predictive programming in Hollywood with everything from the Matrix to Deep Impact, the most recent Green, Greenland, right? And on and on it goes to Geostorm. And, and I don't know, you name the predictive programming where they've been telling you, this is what's coming and we are preparing for this to survive this cataclysmic event. This even gets into, Doug, the deep underground military bases. Isn't it interesting that there is not one detail that is missed in scriptures? The Lord is so faithful to tell us what's going on. If we would ever have the ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And they literally say that they are going to, the great men, the generals and the great men and the leaders of the world are going to hide themselves in the rocks from the great and terrible day of the Lord that is coming onto the earth. They're going to hide themselves in dumbs, or as Obadiah 4 says, they're going to try to set themselves, set their nest among the stars to escape the judgment of God. Let me just read that for you real quick. Obadiah 4, 3, 4. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who lived in the clefts of the rocks, in your lofty dwellings, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like an eagle, though you're, you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. It says they're going to go underground and they're going to try to get off earth because they know what's going on. Yeah. And again, this is going on in real time. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, let me read uh, Revelation 6, 15. Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? And what's interesting about that, Doug, is right before that, it talks about the stars falling from the skies like figs ripened. So, again, and scripture affirms it and the weirdos of the world are affirming it. Right. So when you when we look at like the implementation of this plantary defense, that's a key word. People go research it on your own, dig into it as deep as you want to go. What all the. The scientific community, the academic community, the military industrial complex community, the, the financiers of the world, when you look at this single common thread, one common thread connects all of them and is that they are trying tirelessly to create some form of a planetary defense. The implementation of Space Force and of the amount of rockets and satellites being put into the sky by the private sector, the implementation of the European Space Agency and all that they're doing, Russia, China, India all have their own programs. They're all doing the same exact thing. When you look at the implementation, the directed energy weapons that are on uh, space-based platforms, right, they all 
say that it is about planetary defense. The most recent example, so radical, right in our faces that they're doing was that DART mission that they did uh 2021, the 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 double asteroid, you know, redirection impact thing that they did, where they literally slammed a satellite or a piece of space technology, for lack of a better word, they slammed it into a particular smaller asteroid to see if they could deflect it. They also have been talking and developing the technologies for space mining boring machines, kind of like the movie Armageddon, right? That's what we saw. Oh, there's a, there's an asteroid coming. Send up these miners along with the, the astronomers, right? And these and these uh, uh, these different scientific minds, send them up there, drill into the asteroid as deep as you can get, land on it, you know, with these, these different rowing devices, drill into it, plant nukes, blow it apart, and break it apart into smaller pieces so that maybe the Earth can survive. Guess what, ladies and gents? That is open source information that that is exactly what they're trying to do. So they they try to slam one in, slam this this dart mission to see if they could deflect an asteroid. They're developing mining techniques for landing on asteroids so they can drill into it and blow it up. And they're for making seed vaults and they're trying to develop arcs to get off Earth and they're developing underground military bases like crazy. And all of this has come about in just the last several years when they locked onto this Apophis apophis asteroid in 2004 but i believe that the information or the knowledge of this impending significant significant world altering event came in the early 80s um i'll just read this quote with for you real quick from uh ronald reagan so i believe that this is when everything shifted and when you think about the net the the economics of the globe when you think about the geopolitics and the geo strategies of the globe, when you think about the militarism, the massive campaign for sterilization, the destruction of the nuclear family, which is sterilization, the implementation of LGBT, which is sterilization, by the way, these are always to population reduce, the wholesale pushing for abortion, the development of HIV, which is a bioweapon that they now learn how to aerosolize through different techniques. Uh, and then you roll out these other pandemics and these massive wars. It all began after President Ronald Reagan made this public address to the UN General Assembly in September of 1987. He said this, in our obsession with the antagonisms of the moment, we often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Reagan goes on to say, perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bond. He, he went on to say, I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet I ask you, is not this alien threat already among us? And within several, within a short period of time after making this statement about a unified global threat from outer space, an alien, a foreign threat, a foreign threat from outer space that would cause a unification and consolidation of all the governments of the world. All the borders don't matter. All the economies don't matter. All the diverse cultures don't matter. All the militaristic strategic objectives no longer matter. All the economies and all the money changing of the world no longer matter within a short period of time after making this statement. Guess what he rolled out? Star Wars. And then guess what came out? Deep Impact. And then guess what came out? The Matrix, which his name in the Matrix is Neo, near-Earth near object, right? Then Armageddon, and then Oblivion, and then Elon Musk, and then Richard Manson, and then Noah Yuval Harari, and then the Antarctic meetups, and then the total restructuring and the consolidation of all media all started beginning right at the late 80s into the early 90s. And so you see how this is all totally interconnected for what's going on. But in particular, in particular is from 2018 to this day. 2018 to this day was like their oh crap moment where everything in, went into hyperdrive. And when you look at it, it goes 2018, uh, National Near Earth Object Preparedness Strategy Action Plan was developed. February 2019, President Trump 
Sciences Space Force Directive Policy Number Four, right? And all of a sudden, is putting everything he possibly can into outer space, right? It was almost birthed overnight. Nobody even understands what's going on with it. May of 2019, New York City simulation of an asteroid impact over the course of several years and how to respond for it. They brought together NASA. Planetary Defense Coordination Office, FEMA, European Space Agency, International Academy on Aeronautics and Planetary Defense. They brought them all together in May of 2019. Their findings from that simulation was that the number one threat is humanity, not the asteroid. That was their findings. They said all efforts to deflect the asteroid would fail. Nuclear deflections would fail. They would try to detonate nukes on the asteroid and it would just fragment it and destroy it even more. Sound familiar? This is in every movie for the last 20 years. These are their findings from May of 2019. The asteroid will, will break up and rain down smaller meteor, meteoroids and meteorites all along the East Coast. They needed a strong centralized government with supreme command and control over all communications, all technologies, and all analysis and all dissemination of information. This was their findings in 2019, okay? They needed to centralize all press and all media control for disclosure of information about the impending event. They needed to manage any premature announcements because of the resultant systemic panic, which means they need to uh, nullify all alternative media and alternative media platforms. I kid you not, these are their findings. Tell me if any of this has happened in 2019. They said all power would be gone, all communications would be gone, all mobility would be gone, sea, air, and land gone, all fresh water supplies would be gone, all relief efforts would be a null and void, and all sustainable food production would be gone. Notice all the private land acquisitions of our farmland since 2019 by Bill Gates and others. Notice the consolidation of all supply and all supply chains, the consolidation of all armaments and all fuel and fuel reserves, the consolidation of all the media, the cancel culture of any threat of, dis of any information that would counter the official public narrative. This all began in 2019, May 2019. Now listen. Their conclusion was that there was too many people to deal with and there was no stopping the outcome of what was coming. And their only singular conclusion was that the human chaos factor was the number one threat. They needed to control the human chaos factor. Doug, what, what simulation then occurred in October of 2019? This was May, was all these findings. What simulation was run, an event, in October of 2019. 201. Event 201. Event 201 happened several months later. And what was that about? A wide scale, global, systemic health crisis that would create massive depopulation and require what? A consolidation of all governments and all relief efforts in the world. Event 201. Enter in to late 2019, early 2020. We have exactly that. We have this wholesale smokescreen to massively sterilize, massively depopulate, and more importantly, massively consolidate every single aspect of the human experience by centralized governing authorities all around the world. So you see how this just keeps going and going and going 2020 right after event 201 happens right after we're starting to hear these little nuances of this global pandemic going on the movie greenland gets released with gerard butler where it's talking about all the governments of the world knew this thing was coming in a premature panic and notice what they had they had deep underground military bases that they used a lottery to take people with special skills into the deep military deep underground military bases because of the impending asteroid event that was coming that's what that movie centered on and right? that's a real thing and, and that's a real thing mm -hmm. and shortly after this you have the ukraine debacle with russia and the crazy push for World War III because they need billions gone in very short order, billions. 
billions gone in very short order because they know that this thing is coming. So again, this gets into the root of the depopulation. What is this thing that's coming? It's a POFIS, right? Uh, they've coined it a POFIS and there's actually other space bodies attached to it and all the effects that come along with it. So now to just kind of lay out, you know, the, the why, the bigger why of what we're seeing, why the spending doesn't matter, why these weird black budgets that are usually space-based operations, right? Why this great reset, the talk of the great reset, why this consolidation of all control? Is it just because they're globalist elite freak shows? Well, yeah, obviously we understand that, right? But it's actually because there is biblically prophetic significant events coming that they're all aware of that the general public is not aware of, and they are bracing for impact. Let me give you a break real quick. Um, <clears throat> the Guidestones. The whole world population needs to be under 500 million, right? So yeah. that has, obviously, that's depopulation. Does that have to do with this? And 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 then from there, what about the breaking of the Guidestones? Yeah, absolutely. And and the, and not just the Guidestones, but the Deagle Report. And then not just the Deagle Report, but the occultism. And not the Deagle just the Report is occultism. for 2025, right? 2025. Okay. And now let me, why is that? Why is 20? Notice everything centered on 2025. If anybody hasn't picked over up, up on that, and about the last decade, Everything from UN Agenda 21, which then is the UN Agenda 2030, which is different Davos and that World Economic Forum policies that had come out. We have the Deagle Report. Now we have the WEF with their great reset talk. Everything has been centered on 2025. Why is that significant? Well, it just so happens that NASA and the European Space Agency when they talk about Apophis, they say that it will be visible in the sky in 2025. As soon as this thing is visible, they lose all control globally, all control. They lose all control when it's visible because of the resultant human osmotic pressure, right? And the human chaos factor. So everything has to be in place, including the conclusion of World War III and the restructuring of the globe because of World War III, the reconsolidation of all governments and all economies and all control mechanisms by 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 at post World War III, all has to be done by 2025 because that's when you're going to see a pofus in the sky. That's not my determination. Those are the that is the data. From the scientists and the physicists and the heliophysicists and the astrophysicists who are mathematicians beyond comprehension um, when they unequivocally know this thing will be visible with a tail of debris millions of miles long and millions of miles wide that the Earth will pass through in 2029. So that's why this is all significant. Let me, let me ask you something. Is there a certain quadrant within space? that they know what's coming from because you know like um our friend mono gonzalez uh, he's got a fifteen thousand dollar telescope and he's looking at other galaxies right now it's it's beautiful the some of these other galaxies it's it's just absolutely amazing you, but the you, earth's you, flat bro uh, i mean how could I that forget. be the earth <laughs> yeah 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 I, I might just walk Anyways, right off on, of it go. one day god yeah. those people are infuriating to me um here, here's what I think is interesting is you have amateur astrologists have the ability to see other galaxies. Why is it that no one has seen it yet? Or is it that they just don't know where to look? Is it not within our solar system? Is it extra solar right now? Yeah. The thing is, is that, you know, they, they actually, these different space agencies, we know there's levels of cover up, right? And moon landing, we get it. They're all hyper occultic, all space-based research is hyper occultic because when you think about it um, uh you know the historical nature of all myth from the incans to the mayans to the to the indo-europeans and everything else it's all centered on the study of the stars astronomy and astrology right is a big deal uh so we know that there's cryptic things within these space agencies but you can't throw out the baby with the bath water just because you're you're the super duper conspiracy theorist you don't get to do that that would be 
that would be in a that would be a high degree of a lack of intellectual integrity to just throw out everything coming from these space agencies but they actually want and encourage an amateur astronomers to study these things actually a lot of the findings of these different near earth objects are phos they call them. they call them neos or phos potentially hazardous objects so stupid why they use all these different acronyms but they they like the uh, civilian, you know, amateur astronomers locking on to these things because a lot of times they're the ones that discover them because they are looking in particular areas that maybe the very high end space agency telescopes aren't oriented towards, you know. So um, the visibility of a POFIS will be being able to be locked on by anim anim amateur astronomers in very short order. And so the reason why that 2025 date is significant is because this thing is scheduled. Let me get, let me find my, my particular notes on COFIS, right? Uh, it, okay, it's set to arrive to where it will affect the Earth April 13th, 2029. It is that particular, April 13th, 2029. But what's interesting is they say that it will be visible to the naked eye exactly three and a half years prior to that. And but did I say... 2029, if I, I think I might have mixed up my words, April 13th, 2029 is when it's going to pass the earth, but 2025 is when it will be visible. It is exactly three and a half years prior to this thing coming to the earth, it will be visible. That's a very particular, biblically, eschatologically significant time frame. if you know your scriptures. Three and a half years in the tribulation period is when these things, these trumpets start getting blasted and it's all a continual celestial event that's going boom, 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 boom. The restructuring of the entire earth, the destruction of the entire earth, which gives rise to the antichrist and the beast and the whole beast system, the consolidation of all governments and all governmental powers and an existential astronomical celestial threat that all of humanity will share in to create a collective consciousness, a unified collective consciousness, crying out for peace and security. This is the data that's going on with the POFIS. Hey, and by the way, here's, let me, here's let me the add, unique... Let ahead. me add something to what you just said. Um, Passover ends Thursday, April 13th, April 2029, the eight days of the festival of Passover, the last day of it is April 13th. That's that's fascinating because the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets is one of the few feasts that has yet to be satisfied by Christ because it's a future fulfillment. And the Feast of Trumpets, I believe, comes right after the Passover. And let me let me say this about Apophis. It's interesting of all things that they named it Apophis. Apophis is a an Egyptological deity. And what's interesting about Apophis is that it is the spirit of evil, darkness, destruction, earthquakes, and death. And here's the unique qualifier about Apophis, the deity, the Egyptological deity of Apophis is that it was a, a malevolent force that could not be stopped no matter what. That's the unique qualifier of that Egyptian deity is that it cannot be stopped. And it is called the great serpent or the great dragon. No way. No, they just happen to name this thing Apophis, an Egyptological deity, the great serpent, the great dragon, which is darkness, death, destruction, chaos, earthquakes all over the place. And no matter what, it cannot be stopped. Of all names they chose for this asteroid, isn't that significant, you know? So anyways, it, the layers go on and on and on. But one of the unique things that I think is fascinating, and that's kind of in my wheelhouse because I look at the scriptures and then I look at the science and I look at the scriptures and I look at the science and I look at the scriptures, look at the science is the earth sciences and the heliophysics and the earth physics that occur from science when a near earth object comes by and what they're saying. And we can, we can break into that if you want, but it's fascinating. It is what they're saying about a, a POFIS 
is verbatim what the scriptures have already told us is going to happen. So are they thinking Apophis is Wormwood then, or, or is this another celestial body? No, they would, they would, they wouldn't use the word Wormwood, but that, that would be our biblical context. But what's even interesting about that is in different circles, academic circles, they actually do refer to these significant neos, these world threat neos as Wormwood, because they all know the scriptures, right? It's even interesting in that movie Greenland with Gerard Butler, they specifically, you hear it in the background because it's predictive programming. You hear it in the background on a radio broadcast. Of course, a kooky Christian saying that this is Wormwood of the book of Revelation, but it's very subtle. And in the background, you hear him say that. But yeah, uh, I believe that this is Wormwood. And here's the thing. I again, I'll, I'll say this because I will only ever hold to the scriptures. There is not a earth ending asteroid impact, asteroid, meteoroid that it changes depending on where it's at in space and the size of it. That's the astronomical language that they use. There is not, but there is a one third of the earth's population destroying celestial event. There is a one third of the trees being burned up. There's a one third of the grasses being burned up. There's a one third of the water becoming poison. There's a one third of the sun being darkened, the moon being darkened. There's a one third of the ships on the sea being destroyed and the fish in the sea being destroyed. There is a one third of humanity dying because of these things. There's huge earthquakes that kill hundreds of thousands at one time that are mentioned all throughout scripture. And there is a uh, a shaking their fist at the heavens and a refusal to repent because of the judgments of God coming from space, celestial event onto the earth. That is absolutely true in scripture, but not an earth ending asteroid impact. So in, um, in the seven trumpets, that's uh, Revelation 8. So we're sitting here at verse 10. The third angel blew his trumpet and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light met might be darkened and a third of the day might be kept from shining and likewise a third of the night then i looked and i heard an eagle crying with a loud voice as it flew directly overhead woe 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 to those who dwell on earth at the blast of the other trumpets that the three angels were about to blow and then in chapter nine the fifth angel blew his trumpet and i saw a star fall from heaven to earth and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit and he opened the shaft of the bottomless pit and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft then from the smoke came the locust yeah and it just keeps going so when you look at the the totality of script matthew 24 luke 21 mark 13 luke 12 when you look at uh uh second Peter two, I believe, or three, it talks about all the earths, all the elements being burned with fire, right? You have the the six seal, then you have the seven trumpets, then you have the bowls being poured out, right? You have uh, I believe it's Isaiah 24, don't quote me on that when it talks about the the axial wobble, right? The earth staggering like a drunkard. You have the uh, sign in the sun and in the moon and the stars. You have stars falling from the heaven like a tree being ripened. You have men's men uh, being perplexed by the roaring of the seas and the waves. So you have these great tsunamis. You have crustal shift occurring, right? You have magnetosphere disruptions. Revelation 7 Revelation 16 talk about the scorching heat, the scorching heat, the scorching heat. Isn't it interesting that at the same time, a third of the sun is darkened and a third of the moon is darkened and a third of the sun is darkened? Like, as there's this atmospheric debris and particulation in the atmosphere, that men are being scorched by heat? How could that be? Well, if you have magnetosphere disruption, you no longer have that barrier from the solar radiation coming from the sun. And you have boils and sores breaking out on people. You have people hiding themselves. Then you have global famine. You have global pestilence. You have, you know, incurable diseases. 
you have gravitational anomalies, uh, increased radioactive exposure. Uh, you have genetic mutations. Listen, this is at the root of even transhumanism. When the magnetosphere gets disrupted by space bodies and you have this radical solar radiation coming in, it actually radiation creates genetic mutations. Why do you think they're developing artificial wombs? Why do you think they're developing transhumanism where they want to alter your, your ability or, or your genetics to, to be able to do things? Why do you think they're terraforming the earth with the geoengineering and things like this? It's all related to this singular event, right? You have the atmospheric rivers right now being jacked up. Remember the solar storm just last week where like even in Ireland and all the way down in Alabama, they're seeing the Northern Lights. Ladies and gents, if you're seeing the Northern Lights, that's a problem. That's a problem. That means is there is radical disruptions and solar discharges and CMEs at a level we don't understand. And the magnetosphere is thinning and being disrupted in different areas. That's why you're seeing it. It's because... This, these space bodies and their effects on the earth sciences are already beginning to be experienced. The atmospheric river is shifting, right? The hydro conveyor of the oceans is shifting. It's all shifting right now. Thermal dynamics and the, and the heat transfer, the specific heat of even a space body striking the ocean is going to be at work, right? Like I know being a firefighter, the steam conversion of when you put water on something hot or something hot enters water, right? Steam conversion is insane at what it does and how instantaneously it can create this blanket that although the sun's dark out, it creates this suffocating heat blanket at a molecular level that is way smaller than other molecules. Uh, a, a steam molecule is that it can actually penetrate the skin and give you second degree burns, which creates boils and blisterings all over your body, right? We have aquifer collapses, a bleedo disruption, right? And famine and all kinds of other things that are all a, all a result scientifically of this space body coming in and 2025 visible present in 2029. And guess what? All those things I just described are all in the scriptures. They're all in the scriptures relating to things that people are going to experience in the great and terrible day of the Lord, the great and terrible day of the Lord. All these things are illustrated in scriptures. And a CME X-22 class is what's predicted to eventually hit the earth. Um, I remember when we got briefed about that in DHS a long time ago, you know, the possibilities of massive power outages and the effects of a CME versus the effects of an EMP, you would rather be hit by the EMP nine yeah, times out of 10. Sure. Um, sure. And, you know, I mean, if, if you weaken the magnetosphere through all this interruption from spatial bodies falling volcanoes and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's a city ender. That's a world ender for technology anyways. Puts us right back into the 1800s, something that nobody is ready for. There might be like a few holdouts of civilizations that don't have technology that can survive that, but three quarters of the people on earth would die because you don't know yeah. what to do without lights and running water. You know what's interesting too, Doug, is that it, they specifically say when they do their modeling and their simulations is obviously because of the the axial rotation and the and the tilt of the Earth. This is what the scientific community says, not me. It's just so God is so good to tell us very plainly. They say that it's not the larger space body itself that's the threat. It, it is the debris trail, the debris trail and our gravitational uh, field pulling in all this debris where we're literally getting hit with a bird shot. It's like bird shot from a shotgun on a planetary scale. And what they say is depending on, on the rotation of the earth at the time that a space body comes by with their multi-million mile debris trails of space junk and rocks and, 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 uh, it's smaller size comets, right. Frozen ice chunks and frozen gases, plus solid rocks of different irons and ores and things like this is that they say one third of the planet will get peppered at the time that it passes through the debris trail. Isn't that interesting, Doug? 
Where have we heard the number one third? One third of the trees and grass, one third of the ocean, one third of the whatever. One third just gets obliterated as it's on its uh, axial rotation passing through the debris trail of one of these larger space bodies. Again, now we have context for the why. Why the push? Why the accumulation and acquisition of food and food production? Why the culling of things? Why the why the the Salvar Global Seed Vault? What's the the root of the necessity of a major global war having to happen right now? How about calls for sterilization? Calls for the next pandemic? How about modern monetary uh, theory? Right, the reduction of all mobility. You think the destruction of combustion engines and all this green freak show movement stuff is because they're altruistic and care about their Gaia mother earth worship it has nothing to do with that. It's about controlling your, your mobility. Cause if you can't remember their findings, I'll keep circling around to their findings was the human chaos factor is the threat. So create lockdowns, create regional lockdowns, reduce mobility, make every reduce our, our strategic oil reserves, take away uh, combustion engines so you can you can't travel far. Create the 15 minute city. See all of this is leading somewhere, right? The root of the genetic banks. The 23andMe and Genealogy.com and the PCR tests that are all being held in Chinese genetic banks. Why are they doing that? Why is there this push for transhumanism, right? What's the root of the Mars narrative or space SpaceX, right? The root of the terraforming of the Earth with the geoengineering strategies. All these can only be understood through the lens of this singular cataclysmic astral catastrophism that is en route to the United States or to the United States that is en route to humanity at this time. And again, this is why we have to root ourselves in an identity in Christ Jesus alone. This is why we have to know and understand while they're hiding themselves in the rocks of the earth created by God, we hide ourselves in the true and better cleft of the rock, Jesus Christ, right? We are not of those who fear bad news. Let them be unhinged. We have a hope in Christ Jesus that nothing can ever, that nothing can ever take or destroy or reduce or nullify. We have the love of God made known in Christ Jesus that no powers of hell, no darkness, nor angel, nor demon, nor nothing in all of creation including rocks from outer space, because those are created by God, and separate us from the love of God that's been made known to us in Christ Jesus. This is why the five wise, prudent virgins prepare accordingly. This is why Proverbs says, a prudent man foresees danger coming and plans accordingly, but a fool goes on and suffers for it, right? This is why Jesus says, I told you about these things ahead of time, so that, Matthew 24, you will not be cut unaware. Oh, and by the way, in Luke 21, this is why Jesus also said, when you begin to see all these things taking place, all these things that we're talking about right now, when you begin to see all these things taking place, you stand up and you look up, look up for your redemption draws nigh, right? So this is why it all matters and is prescient right now. Okay, so let me ask you a couple of biblical questions then. One, do you believe, as in uh, chapter 9 for Revelation, that the star that's falling that's going to open up the bottomless pit is an actual star falling that's just going to create a giant hole, and then whatever is stuck in the hollow earth that people like to talk about so much comes screaming out of it, the locust, the demon army? Or do you think that's an actual angel, a, a real celestial body? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, I, I I think it's it's an either or or it's a both and. We won't know till after the fact, you know. But it's interesting that the name of the star is Apollyon or Apollos, which means the destroyer. What it what is Apophis? Apophis is called the destroyer. So it's even interesting that it's it's an etym uh, uh, etym Et a, wow, man, I have a speech. The etymology of the word has changed for destroyer, but Apollyon or Apollos is called the destroyer. Now, you know, Derek Gilbert and other guys like that, they're uh, amazing researcher, academic researchers at the etymology of words. 
would say that Apollyon or Apollos is the etymology, I believe, of Osiris, of Horus, of Nimrod, which is a actual principality, like a fallen angel principality that will come with the key to the hollow earth where we know we're told in Peter and in Jude that the rebel angels are reserved for judgment inside the earth and that they're loosed back onto the earth. So I do understand that and lean that way too, but isn't it interesting that it's specifically called a star that hits the earth that opens up a giant furnace, which would be like, you know, some form of volcanism or release of different things. And then things come up out of the earth out of that. And the sun is darkened and the moon is darkened. So again, you have an earth, a star falling to the earth. So yeah, that's, that's a good question. And what's interesting is that when they talk about the impacts of this was in that uh, May 2019 fighting from that from that think tank group that got together and simulated an asteroid impact on the east coast of the U.S. is that they said what happens to when a space body impacts the Earth is it fractures our aquifers. It fractures the the different vents inside the Earth and in, in the crust of the Earth and releases poisonous gases and gases on levels that we don't understand and poisons all the underground fresh water supplies because of the shifting and the breaking open of these different thermal vents and gases that they end up mixing and wrecking our water supplies. Again, science affirms what God has already said. And what's unique too is the science says that when these space bodies historically have come through, they even go as recent as the Middle Ages and up to including the uh, some of the different plagues of like the 13, 14, 15 centuries. They say that they were all coincided with radical celestial events that the people saw in the sky and different uh, comet slash asteroid events that they saw in the sky. And as they came by the earth, that with that plagues came out on the earth at the same time that this was visible. The presupposition is that there's foreign bodies and foreign bacteria in the space, de- space dust that the human immune system can't handle. And it creates widespread uh, plagues, quote unquote, plagues or pandemic type things because of the foreign junk in the space dust of these space bodies. Again, it just goes on and on and on of the why. Why are they doing what they're doing is because they actually know the scriptures more than the Christians do. They'll right, just so never bow their knee to them. Let's, let's ask another why. The Lucifer telescope. There you go. Interesting. So Interesting the- choice. The large binocular Lucifer telescope, one the largest binocular telescope in the world is owned by the Vatican, which is only occultic. Everybody track it. That is one of the highest mystery religions, Canaanitic, Phoenician-based mystery schools in the world. So adept in occultism and the worship of Lucifer that they buy the mountaintop in Arizona, Mount Graham. Why is the Vatican buying a mountaintop in Arizona? And they erected the Vatican's observatory with the Lucifer device. Nothing to see here, ladies and gents. Don't worry of the fact that we call it Lucifer device. And that's Not an a area where, where that's a, a major worship area for the First Nations people. And it's also a portal. They claim a portal where the, the gods came down and touched right there. Am I correct? Yeah. Yep. And and even this whole area where I'm at, I can look out my office window and uh, look at Mesa Verde uh, National Park. I can see it from my office window. They, this is a major portal area too, where they, which is we're not too far from Mount Graham, and also the Canyon of the Ancients is six miles that way out my window in front of me is Canyon of the Ancients and all that. This area is a hotbed for that type of stuff. So, uh, Doug, this even gets into disclosure and soft disclosure oh this gets i'm into going directed energy weapons and space. i'm going that this direction. gets into this it's all interconnected you can't have you can't understand the nuance this is how we started off this program you can't understand the nuances of everything that's going on unless you understand the macro the macro is the immutable word of the lord that's the macro perspective 
And when you understand that, now you understand this incessant, insatiable push for all things corrupted, perverse, consolidating, usurping, World War III, depopulating, sterilization, you, you name it, it's all through that macro lens. So what, okay, so let's let's back up a little bit because we briefly talked about something, but I want to touch on it. Um, escaping to Mars. Okay, right now we can barely get a, tele, uh, a telescope. We can barely get a rocket into space. But apparently we were able to get it into into the moon. And I know you have the, the Van Allen radiation belt and the flat earthers, and we have so many conspiracies. And uh, who really knows who to trust at this point, right? But the last well, time well, I let saw let me say this. Let me say this. I have friends who work like they would only tell me enough to know, but they work for Lockheed Martin, they work for Northrop Grumman, they work mm -hmm. on space-based technologies. And they and I was just with them, and they have told me they have clearances beyond top secret because of the technologies they work on on the private sector for the DOD. For one thing, I can tell you this: the Earth isn't flat. Go talk to somebody who actually works in that world. And two, their capabilities for off Earth colonization are more advanced than what people could ever understand or realize so i i have so, i have problems yeah. with that i have problems with that because elon musk just got like the most advanced rocket um off the ground and then exploded halfway before getting out of the atmosphere now i was i was paying attention to this and the starship apparently was either meant to explode or it didn't matter that it explode it was the lift capability was the only thing that they were really concerned about um, but from, from there, you got to talk about some other different societal problems. Once you get to a colonization and Mars, look, man, people are weird. People have weird things yeah. that they do. You, and you get them stuck into a little bubble or a, a bunch of connecting bubbles into Mars. Um, you know, you're going to have to deal with all their weirdness. And besides the fact that the, that the winds on Mars produce hellacious hurricanes of, of just dirt and grit and rocks hitting all the surfaces. So you're going to have a lot of maintenance problems. Uh, your manufacturing has to be like top grade. I don't see right now. And this is Doug's perspective. I'm not a, I'm not a damn scientist. I'm not an astronaut though. I have played one on TV. Um, I, I would like to say that it it just feels like we are not there yet to actually colonize. We maybe can can thrust a a, a satellite to Mars and you know land a rover there, but landing people like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and all these other idiots and, and well, and and here's here's my perspective on that is they're not going to achieve it, but they're pursuing it. You know, I I absolutely I unequivocally don't, and that's why. That's why even, you know, we read in Obadiah 4, like they hide themselves in the rocks and they cry to set their nest among the stars. But again, it goes back to that Nimrodian arrogance. You know, I, I always talk about the Nimrodian arrogance and even Nimrod at the Tower of Babel, you know, the God said, you know, they said, come, let us build this tower. It, and by the way, it was built in the valley, the Valley of Shinar. It wasn't, although it had physical structures, right? Like monolithic structures and different stone building techniques. It wasn't just a, an edifice. It was a Stargate portal. They were trying to assault the throne room of God. They were trying to assault the most high in the heavenly realms, the divine council, which is all spoken of in scriptures, right? Psalm 89 and elsewhere. Like they were seeking to assault the throne room of God through in the Valley of Shinar through this thing that Nimrod was building. And what did God what did the Trinity say, right? It's they, they're speaking amongst one another. And there's also divine council of gods, right? There's other celestial hosts that are up there, part of things. It's all laid out in scriptures, whether or not you're aware or familiar with that or not. Just read, the, keep reading the word as much as you can, right? But uh, God says to, to us, he uses the us or the we. He says that nothing would be impossible. Come, let us confound their language because nothing would be impossible possible for them to achieve. He said that they could achieve assaulting God's throne room, a portal 
a Stargate, a whatever, a capabilities that we, we don't even understand unless they confounded their their language. So again, this gets back into the even the Nimrodian arrogancy of the global elite right now with their off Earth pursuits and their inner Earth pursuits. They are capable of achieving it, not because they're amazing, but because they have influence from principalities, just like all the adepts, all the cultists, all the world leaders have from the beginning of time, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of the Lord, uh, the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. What was going on in the days of Noah? What was going on in the days of Lot? Do your research, right? So it is, it is significant. I do believe that they would... They have the potential to achieve it, but I don't think they'll be allowed to achieve it. The Lord's gonna, the Lord's gonna judge humanity before they're able to escape. And notice what it says in Obadiah 4. It says, though you set your nest among among the stars, I'm gonna bring you low for judgment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take care of you wherever you try to go. I'm gonna take care of you. So then that would mean that at one point in time, there was technology that we cannot replicate, which would explain for some of the mega structures that are still surviving with the availability, the technical availability and means to go through different portals and dimensions, things that we are still just, you know, mathematically playing around with on a chalkboard. We had to build the large Hadron Collider to more or less do what the witches and warlocks would do with blood sacrifices, which is creating portals into other dimensions. Right. This gets into like Tiwanaku and like Titicaca and different things, you know, you and I've been blessed to be on expeditions with, with Tim to go and explore. I mean, there's stargates, there's stargates and portals all over the face of the earth. Mesa Verde is one Mount Graham we already talked about. And, and then not even that talking about ancient technologies, there's Vedic texts that talk about nuclear war, yep. nuclear weapons, nuclear war exchanges, and a Vedic text. There's Vedic texts in Sanskrit that talk about the Viamanas, which are anti-gravitical propulsion dish-shaped saucers that the gods of old would travel around on. You know, you get into Nazca and the Nazca lines and the layouts of these different uh, megalithic and monolithic structures all over the face of the earth that were only conducted with high technological advancements and aerial platforms to be able to do these things. So again, when we, when we look at history, you know, it, it's not that we're discovering new technologies right now in our current age. We're only rediscovering ancient technologies, technologies that God wiped off the face of the earth with the great deluge through astral catastrophism because of what they were messing around with. And now you have the same thing happening again. Yeah, everything from transhumanism to the technologies to just the wicked lawlessness, right? And perversity, all being rebirth, days of Noah, days a lot again on the face of the earth and the lord is going to respond handily this time once and for all time when the seals begin being broken and the trumpets begin being blasted there will be no doubt god says he will not only shake the earth this time but also the heavens and the earth men will be undone with fear by what they see in the heavens they will be undone with fear. And the Antichrist and the global leader are going to capitalize on it and consolidate all power and all control and all these different things. They're even going to capitalize on it with the great deception, getting into disclosure, right? The return of the men of renown, the return of the gods of the gods of old to save humanity because the bad God is hurting humanity. The Good gods, the good God himself, the Antichrist is here to restore peace and security. All you got to do is give allegiance to him and bow down and worship him and be in awe of him and give yourself over to him and take his mark that will actually change you genetically so that you're no longer in the image of God. You're created in his image so that you can have some degree of immortality or life preservation, however it comes, life extension, life preservation because of all the things that are happening on the earth. See how it's all interconnected? It's all interconnected through this astrocatastrophism. Okay, so you already went there. Soft disclosure. What does all this have to do with UFOs? Because everything about UFOs is coming out from the Pentagon. I don't care about all the kooky people on the internet. I really don't. But when the Pentagon starts producing papers, and I can then find paper trails back into the 1930s and 40s and on, 
um, that is actually proving what the Pentagon Papers are coming out with now. And, and, and proving, you know, don't beat me up over that. I can just say here is a white paper document trail from the 30s to now saying yeah. this is are they are they saying there's aliens or there's or are they really giving a soft disclosure to the pantheon of gods that the world once worshiped and then forgot is that what's coming back because when we talk to yeah. our friend tim alberino it's aliens and grays and all that and then a lot of us have the other opinion that it's actual fallen angels. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I lean that way when I, I don't even like using the word alien. I like using extraterrestrial because what's extraterrestrial mean? It means beyond earth or not of earth. It's extraterrestrial, right? So what's a fallen angel? What's the principality? Is the prince of the power of the airs, right? The prince of the power of the airs is where these guys roll. This is, this is how they operate. And so I say extraterrestrial, absolutely. And what's interesting about the extraterrestrial uh, narrative and the return of the golden age of the gods is all the occultists say it, all the mystery schools say it, all the mystery religions say it, all the apostate religions say it the vatican says it the mormons say it the muslims are looking for it right for for the for the 12th imam and all these things that, that come with it the jews are looking to the skies for it the christians lord willing will be the ones that understand it because they understand the scriptures and they receive christ as the messiah already right but they're all saying the same thing all, all of them are saying the same thing. The time has come for these guys to return. The scientists are saying it. The New Agers are saying it. The cultists are, the, the cultists are saying it. <clears throat> There's the number one fastest growing religion is highly spiritual, and it is based on the return of the gods. Panspermia is a religion. Transhumanism is a religion, right? The AI techno gods and technocracy is a religion. And it's actually all centered on the same thing. Trying to connect with these guys because we're going to self-destruct as humanity. And these guys, through their advanced technology and through their self-directed evolutionary processes for us, will usher humanity into the next level of our evolutionary process because of what's coming on the earth and what's happening on the earth. See, it's, it's all related. It's all related. Do they come back and do we interact with them? Not in a hocus pocus, secret, dark, you know, five-star general behind the scenes, uh, purview. Do they come out in the open and do we actually see them? Is that is that an eventuality? Yeah, and unequivocally, biblically, unequivocally, because the whole world marvels after the beast out of the sea. There's a beast out of the sea and a beast out, of, and they marvel after them. There's things coming up onto the earth that are bad. There's things coming up. There's deceptions, speech and peace and security with flatteries. He serves gods he knew not. Like like when you look at all the attributes of the Antichrist, he is not normal. It's not some some, uh, you know, just normal biblical leader that is indwelt by the spirit of Lucifer himself. That's not it. Has anybody ever marveled after a man? Obama was the closest that anybody's ever seen a man being marveled after, which is insane. Because if you remotely had the Holy Spirit, it was like he repulsed you. You wanted to vomit. Every word out of his mouth was a lie. The way he swaggered made me cringe on the inside. But when you think about the mass of humanity globally, not just Americans, they close to marveled after Obama, right? Mm -hmm. And so no, nobody's ever been marveled. No, you wouldn't fall down and, and throw off your religion. Muslims wouldn't throw out their religions. Hindus and Shintao and Buddhist and blah, 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 and Mormons and Christians themselves wouldn't all throw off the religion overnight for a man who's a good political leader. But notice the unique attribute of the Antichrist is as soon as he appears, all the world's religions completely throw off their dogmas and go, finally, that's the answer. That's the answer. All of our religions point to those guys. Well, all of our practices, all of our dogmas are those guys. And in a heartbeat, they all 
mm-hmm. drink the Kool-Aid of the great deception, throw off their dogmas, and they give themselves fully in worship to these guys, this guy and whatever comes along with them. And that's what the Vatican's been pushing with the, the tri-religion uh, meshing, the interfaith movement. And yeah, the that, ecumen- ecumenism. Yeah, yeah, that's that's re- really just to dissolve all boundaries of religion. Um, and I think it is for the eventuality of the Antichrist. Where does the Antichrist fit in all this? Because as you read in Revelation, like I, I've been told different ways of how to read Revelation, and I just don't, I've just gotten to where I don't listen to anybody else, and I just read the book. Um, the the seals happen before the Antichrist comes. Wormwood happens before the Antichrist comes. A lot of really bad things, like you know, a quarter of the world's population is gone before the Antichrist comes. If you read from chapter one to twenty-two, so where in your mindset, from your study and research, does the Antichrist um, plop up in this picture now? That gets into that three and a half year the the signification of that three and a half year thing that. Though Apophis comes in 2029, three and a half years prior to that, it's v- visible in the sky. I believe it's it's like October 13th, 2025, Friday the 13th. It happens to be Friday the 13th. Uh, I, I believe that that's what the data shows. Don't, don't quote me on that. And um, he does, it, the relevancy of the Antichrist is that he shows up in response to the dire circumstances of the face of the earth. He calls the ceasefire. And fire. by that point, everybody is more than willing to give themselves over to anybody who could somehow correct it. And again, I think the transhumanism movement is a big component of this that people don't understand. You know, the changing of the Oblito and the magnetosphere and the scorching with fire, you know, Isaiah 24 talks about how there is this destruction of humanity. There's even like, there is a genetic corruption and even he's going to bring that answer. Like he's going to show up on the scene with all the answers. Your nuclear war, we we got to stop that. You know, your, your divisions, we got to stop that. Your archaic religions, we got to stop that. Your borders, we got to stop that. Like I am here now. And because of these astro catastrophisms, we've been watching you guys and we're here to restore you to br- usher in peace and security and to bring you in to the fold, to the, to our cosmic fold uh, of the space brethren and usher and lead you into this evolutionary process of the species. All you have to do is take like, it's by the blood of the lamb of Christ Jesus, the lamb, the only lamb who is worthy by his blood that you're healed by his blood that you have eternal life. I believe that it will be by their blood, his blood that you take this into you and you will be quote unquote healed. You will be quote unquote, have eternal life. You will be protected from these things that are breaking out on the earth. So that's why the antichrist is central to the answer to these judgments that are coming on the earth. So do you think the antichrist is more of a scientific man more than a politician? Cause you can be both. But in order to have answers to all these different varying questions, you got to have a lot of science behind it. Because you know, people people said Obama, people said Adolf Hitler, people said Obama, people said uh, you know Donald Trump. But in my mind, and this is just me, and I'm not saying it is this person, but in my mind, the one of the better um, applications for who could be an antichrist could actually be Elon Musk. Someone like him. Yeah. But notice, and I, and I've thought about that too. And also notice that what presupposes or what precedes the antichrist is the false prophet. So it's spiritual leadership. The spiritual leader is the one who affirms or kind of anoints like a counterfeit, you know, Samuel to David or whatever, which became the lineage of, of Christ Jesus is that he he gives his anointing to the antichrist and says all religions all spiritualism you can i am telling you you can give yourself over to this guy so the false prophet is actually on the scene first the false prophet paves away the false prophet creates what i think is an ai image of the base and gives it the power to speak it's a false prophet or or hyper significant spiritual leader that makes the way for the political 
leader to consolidate everything. So that's why it's central. Again, everything's a counterfeit of Christ. So you have a counterfeit Holy Spirit. So you have a counterfeit Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You have Satan. Then you have the Son, the Antichrist. Then you have the Holy Spirit, the false prophet. Everything's an exact. You have a counterfeit death and resurrection. He receives a motor wound from which he's miraculously healed. Right. So counterfeit death and resurrection, the counterfeit of Christ. He performs lying signs and wonders, even calling down fire from the heavens. Lying signs and wonders. Christ affirmed that he was who he said he was through signs and wonders. Right. So everything's an exact counterfeit. That's why I believe the blood of the Antichrist will be the quote unquote salvation of humanity which is why your name is stricken from the Lamb's book of life because he creates, he wants humanity to be altered to where they're no longer created in the image of God. They're no longer redeemable. No, no matter the sincerity of the repentance, they cannot be redeemed because they're not his. They altered at the genetic level, his very image by the blood of that guy, instead of entrusting themselves to the blood of the lamb to be their healing and to be their covering and to be their eternal life. So, yeah. That's that's my macro perspective. So let's talk about the Warrior Summit coming up. Yeah, if anybody's made it this far, <laughs> if they've, <laughs> they've lasted, because we're probably, what, an hour and a half in? If you lasted this long, yeah. Uh, this is why I'm emphatic and I preach the way I do and I teach the way I do. This is why I'm intentional with my family. I'm intentional with loving my wife and and training up my children in the way they should go as the arrows in my quiver, right? This is why I'm intentional with pursuing the Lord and seeking his face while it may be found. Um, I'm intentional in gathering the saints. And that's what we're going to be doing out here in July 28th through the 30th. Doug's going to be out here as one of our one of our keynote speakers. He's coming out to the base camp. Is um, I'm intentional of gathering the people of God because it says in Zephaniah 3, Gather together, gather together, O shameful nation, before the great and terrible day of the Lord arrives. Gather together, all you who seek his face, all you who fear the Lord, gather together. Perhaps you will be shielded on the day of disaster, right? And we're also told in Hebrews, uh, be found gathering together. Do not forsake the gathering of the saints and encouraging one another even more so as you see the day of the Lord approaching. So we have this constant command to be found gathering together. So we're going to be gathering together here at the base camp, July 28th through the 30th for the 2023 Warrior Summit. And we're going to be focusing on developing faith havens or places of refuge for the people of God for the remnant of God, for those who have the ears to hear when the time comes. We're going to be talking about how do we get coordinated? How do we get organized? How do we keep communications? What does it look like to have operational security? How do we uh, have right leadership, biblical leadership in in these smaller communities are these, these faith havens, these havens, these places of refuge that the Lord has told us scripturally he will have for his people And how do we enter into that by faith and by the power of the Holy Spirit? So we're going to gather together in July here. You can find all the detailed information about the summit at calicobuffalobasecamp.com and also at omegadynamics.com. And uh, we're going to have some tangible things to focus on. But the other thing, Doug, that you and I know that we need more than anything else is literally just time to fellowship and engage one another. So it'll be about refreshing, refitting, and rearming for the days that are ahead. So a lot of it is just enjoying the beauty of the Rocky Mountains, getting restored. We're going to have live worship every night. We have worship music every night. There'll be uh, opportunities for people to go on day hikes or excursions or play around in the mountains. Last year, the whole summit (laughs) went together. We went cliff jumping. Everybody went together. We went cliff jumping in a nearby lake. Uh, If you're interested in archaeological stuff, well, I'm six miles from Mesa Verde. I'm six miles from Canyon of the Ancients. I'm uh, an hour from uh, Monument Valley, where the camp's located at, where by Telluride, Silverton, Ure, uh, Sedona, which is another major vortex portal place, is not too far. The Grand Canyon is uh, four and a half hours from here, uh, Zion National Park. So if there's other things you want to do while you're out here, feel free. That's why we're a base camp. But we're going to gather to start getting coordinated 
for the people of God and being refreshed by one another and engaging one another July 28th through the 30th. Oh, praise God. I, I'm excited. Me and the whole family is going to be coming and we're going to be going to some of the archaeological places. That's, uh, you know, obviously if anyone follows me, that's the type of stuff that I like to do. And if you've never seen a 300 pound man inside a cave, it's kind of funny at times how like in places like this big, I can still get in there. Damn it. That's all that matters. So, yeah, I think, well, I think we're going to go to Mesa Verde and then we're gonna go uh, check out one of the vortexes and try to do some scientific readings on it. But uh, look, this is, this is what I want to close with. I want to close with the fact that it seems that time is speeding up and things are getting weirder. Things are getting worse. Um, there has been really, no olive branch reached out to Russia between NATO and Russia. So that is going to continue um, to expire within that relationship. And eventually the deterioration of that relationship, I believe is kinetic warfare. So we yeah. can see that this is definitely in our future. So prepare now wisely while you can please come out to the warrior summit, visit with Jamie, visit with me and visit with all the other speakers that'll be out there. And we're pretty easy going guys. I mean, you can sit around and just talk with us for hours and we answer questions and ask a lot of questions. That's we're not celebrities guys. So, you know, come and hang out and uh, come and fellowship. That's really probably the one thing I want the most is the fellowship part. Yeah. That's what everybody, you know, we, the first couple of years we hosted a warrior summit. It was very like structured, high, heavy information based. And then, you know, it didn't take, but the second go around I'm watching everybody. I'm like, Nobody really cares. They just are happy to be around other people. They they want to talk and talk and talk and engage and network. I mean, you know, this will be our fourth year doing it. We've had people get married because of the summits. We've had now we, we're on, I think the ninth family is moving out here to this area because of the summits. They're moving from all across the country. I'm going to be a part of this particular faith haven. Uh, we've had people start faith havens all over the place. We've had people get married. We've had children be born. We've had parents who, who were going to get vasectomies, not get them and have children be born out of it. And they're super blessed. We've had uh, about nine church plants start because of coming out to these summits and engaging one another in unique ways. So yeah, the information is secondary See, the only thing that matters, which is, which is growing our identity in the Lord, because all the information is going to, it's going to fail you in the end, but knowing the Lord and being radiant in Christ and knowing your mission set as, as a warrior and a warrior priesthood in Christ Jesus foreknown for a very particular mission set in this generation to go forth and be strong in the Lord and do daring feats of valor and to turn many back to righteousness at the time of life's has never been and never will be again. That's what we need to know and understand. See the rocks falling, falling from the sky. They don't mean anything to me because my life is hidden in Christ Jesus, but it's not about me. It's about everybody else. That's right. And so we practically prepare. We were, we were prudent. We try to be shrewd. We try to bless one another and be found gathering together and encouraging one another, even more so as we see this day approaching. We want to make the body of Christ radiant and resilient for all this stuff because you have a mission. And if you're unhinged by this news, you're, you, you don't know your God. And if you're unhinged by the threat of famine and pestilence and disease and governments and FEMA camps and all that, you don't know your God. We shouldn't be unhinged by this stuff. Jesus said, I've told you about this ahead of time so that you will not be caught unaware. So let's get in the fight spiritually, emotionally, and physically and make the most of the king who bought you with his precious blood. That's what it's all about. And I would like to ask um, if it, God puts it on your heart, please donate to Jamie Walden's ministry. Help him out. Help him expand the faith havens because, uh, Jamie, I, I believe what you're doing, brother, is going to eventually be saving lives with the faith haven. So I appreciate what you do for the body of Christ. And, and I know that we all appreciate you and, um, where can people go to for the website if they want to sign up? Yeah, they can go to Calico Buffalo base camp.com is the website and it has all the detailed information. So I think we have a couple RV spots left. You know, we have this camp out here, all the cabins are booked up, all the glamp glamping, you know, fancy, Cool tent things are booked up. I believe there's a couple RV sites left. A lot of people, this tent camp, they use it as an opportunity to 
just enjoy doing something new with their family or with their spouse or whatever. But we all, this also is, I'm right outside Durango, Colorado. This is a high family tourist area. So there's Airbnbs, Verbos, and hotels and motels galore. I mean, like in abundance, this is a high family tourism area. So whatever your accommodations you choose, if you don't want to camp or, or, you know, bumper pull RVs or, or campers or whatever, there's plenty of opportunities for you to come out here and gather. Awesome. And it is all inclusive. It's all inclusive. So all the meals and everything are built in. Uh, we have volunteers that come and work tirelessly to provide the meals for everybody while they're out here. Well, this is awesome, man. I, like I said, I can't wait to show up and we'll have more of these conversations and, you know, in, in between here and there, we'll, um, hopefully do a couple more of these interviews and pick your brain about a few more things. Um, what would you say would for the last two minutes, what would you say that Christians should be doing right now to help grow their relationship with Christ the best? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And it, it, the answer is simple, but it's not easy. Uh, die, die to self. You would not believe how many Christian truthers, awake Christians I talk to that listen to your program. They're going to listen. They listen to me. They listen to all this stuff and they have zero re, re, resiliency and they have next to no faith in the Lord. It's still all about them. It's all about them. It's all about their comfort. It's all about perfection of outcomes. It's all about their hot mess victimization. It's about their relational nightmares that are going on all around them. It's about their money, 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 money. It's always about their money. And it is nothing about the Lord. And I'm telling you, those who know their God will be strong and go forth and do exploits. Those with ears to hear, let him hear what the spirit is saying. Because there are many that are going to be overcome that think they they got it locked on. Many, many will abandon the faith. Many will give heed. Many will betray your brothers and sisters. Many, as soon as these pressures start coming on, if you don't know your God, you will balk under the pressure, just like we did with the, the pandemic. It was such a simple thing and everybody balked with fear. Why? Because they love their lives more than they're willing to lose it for the sake of Christ Jesus. But he says, they, the ones who overcome, they overcome the antichrist. They overcome every, they overcome everything that comes along with the antichrist. It says they will overcome him and all that comes along with them by the blood of the lamb, their word of their testimony and not loving their lives so much as they're afraid to lose it. So there needs to be a dying to a sense of self. There is so much narcissism in the body of Christ right now. Even in the truther movement, it is all about self all the time. And it's it, you're going to be overcome. There's no way around it. You're you're going to be unhinged by these things because it's all about self-preservation instead of understanding who you are in Christ and to Christ and to the Father and the hope of glory and the hope of the resurrection. When you understand that, light momentary afflictions, not even worth comparing. Well, brother, I think you pretty much said it. You know, and, and thank you for that word. And ladies and gentlemen, please go to um go to his website, sign up for the Warrior Summit. If God puts it on your heart, please donate to Jamie Walden's ministry. And that's all yeah, we got. Even for another you. option too is is to if you if maybe you can't personally come or maybe there there are physical limitations. I get it, you know, like there are physical limitations to being able to do stuff, but uh you you can sponsor somebody else to come. You know, there's young families and single moms with kids. We had a single mom last year come out with their three kids and she worked all year to be able to bring on a small income so that she could come here with her children and be around the body of Christ, right? There's a lot of uh, widows and widowers that want to come. There's a lot of single men and single moms and young kids and everybody has very difficult circumstances and they come here to be refreshed in the spirit. So you can always sponsor somebody or a family to come out as well too. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, if God puts it on your heart and you can't come, sponsor a young family to come out there. Well, that's all we got. Um, Jamie, thank you very much for this great interview. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be checking back when with you soon. Stay frosty. The enemy's out there. Thanks, Jamie. 
Thanks for having me on. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall. And nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have, access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history, we're going to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready-made resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper, and that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food how to prepare cooking in emergency situations books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy communication first aid that you wouldn't think of natural antibiotics you name it bob has it now here's the good thing about bob griswold that no one else does but him you don't have to buy anything to talk to him if you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly 800-627-3809 Mountain State Survival covers your basis for your planning, prepping, evacuation, bugging in or bugging out needs. They carry anything from educational material, camping supplies, emergency services supplies, food, first aid, survival kit and equipment, shooting gear, survival gear, tactical gear. They carry it all. They got it in stock. Give Mountain State Survival a ring. That's mountain-state-survival.com. Get this type of supplies while you still can. 304-517-6900. Three, five. Mountain State Survival is one of the only places that I know of currently that is still carrying the delicious Peak Refuel 
meal that is ready to eat. It's personally the only thing that I eat at this point whenever I go out camping, whenever we have any type of emergency or disaster situation. That is the meal that I stick with. And you can find that at mountain-state-survival.com. Use Wrecker 5 for a 5% discount on your overall purchase. That's R-E-K-K-R 5. Mountain State Survival. This show on the Heroes Nation app. Um, Heroes Nation is uh, the Heroes Nation app you can download in the App Store. Uh, it's up and coming. They got a lot of cool information on there. That is the main backup site so far for the American Vindictus show. Uh, you'll, we'll also have some stuff on there that won't be on YouTube. It won't be on Rumble. It'll either be only on the GSRadio.net, who is the uh, host of the American Vindictus show. Or it will only be an exclusive for Heroes Nation. And with that, I mean, you know, stuff that we're doing with the cave exploration, with the archaeological stuff. Uh, I'm going to start getting into a lot of paranormal talks and, you know, coming at that from my law enforcement and Christian perspective and be having guests on. And that will be exclusive to Heroes Nation. So make sure that you give them some love. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for supporting me. God bless you and have a good day.